everybody and welcome to my kitchen, my nice little college kitchen. Today, speaking of college, I am going to be showing you five of my favorite recipes to make as a college student. These are all super easy because honestly, as a college student, I don't have a lot of time. A lot of times I feel like I'm just having to grab whatever I can because I don't have time or I don't have the ingredients or I just don't know what to make. So I'm trying to help y'all out here by giving you five of my favorite recipes to make. And I'm super excited because truly these are things I make on the daily. So I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite recipes starting with breakfast, which is what we're doing right now. All right, so usually for breakfast, I will make a smoothie filled with like a lot of good fruits and vegetables. I find smoothies are like the easiest thing to make in the morning, literally. You just throw, th throw them in there, <laughs> throw them in the blender and let it blend. But if I'm feeling like I want a little treat or something like that, I will make this. And that's because first of all, it's fall. It's starting to get cold outside. And this just screams fall to me, like anything apple cinnamon does. But also like, it's just so yum. What we have here, literally five minutes ingredients. So we have um, some cinnamon bread. You can do cinnamon raisin bread. I don't like raisins, so I just get cinnamon bread. This is from Smith's. Then we have some cream cheese, an apple, cinnamon sugar, and a little bit of powdered sugar. So basically we're making like apple pie. I think it's called an apple cinnamon panini. Because I don't have a panini maker, it's like kind of not really a panini, but if you have a panini maker, that's even better for you. So what we're gonna do is take two slices of bread, put some cream cheese on both sides, and then um, slice some apples and stick those on the bread. Then you sprinkle with some cinnamon sugar, close the sandwich, put it on the skillet. If you have a panini maker, throw it in the panini maker. If you don't, I'll show you a hack for that. Well, now we're gonna butter one side of the bread. Looking good. So the hack for faking a panini maker is simply to put another skillet on top of it. And then you can kind of like press down, right, and flatten it out. Now we're gonna cook until it's like, thoroughly warmed through and like and like cooked on that buttered side. Okay, so here we are all finished. I don't know why I'm spinning it in a circle, but it's nice and flat and then we've got all the good stuff inside and warmed. First taste test, it's gonna fall apart. So good. I got so excited I forgot to show that you can actually sprinkle some powdered sugar on top too if you're feeling even more festive. Okay, I'm back for class and now I'm ready to make lunch. I'm gonna be making two recipes for this now because I have to show you five. <laughs> This is one of the easiest meals ever. It's just elevated. This is usually something that college students make all the time and that is ramen because it's super cheap, basically can't go wrong with it, and it's super fast. So this is my favorite brand of ramen to make. Um, it's spicy ramen. My roommate introduced me to it and I love it. So we're gonna be using that today. And basically what we're doing is just adding a little bit more ingredients to make it more of a complete meal. So this is gonna be more like spicy, peanut Thai noodles. And all that you have to do is cook your ramen according to the directions on the packet. You can use any kind of ramen, really. Then we're just gonna add some peanut butter and like any other toppings that you want in that. We're doing about two tablespoons, more or less. You can do whatever you want and it's kind of foolproof, which is kind of the nice thing about this. And it's also super fast. I'm gonna be making the peanut version today, which means I'm basically just making the noodles and throwing some peanut butter in there. And here we have our Thai noodles. So if you want it a little bit spicier, you can add sriracha. I am kind of a wimp when it comes to spice, so I prefer mine with just like light sriracha or none at all. It's still so hot. <laughs> You'll just have to take my word for it that it's really good. Mmm, so good. All right, this one is more of like a quick dinner if you're needing something really fast and just something you put together really fast. Um, that is exactly what this is. And it's also nice because you can actually keep a lot of the ingredients for a really long time just in your freezer. We're making tacos in a bag, all right? All that you need, some Doritos, small bag Doritos, cheese, lettuce, and whatever your meat is. I'm doing ground turkey because I don't eat red meat. And again, very, very simple. You just cook your meat, and then crush your bag of chips a little bit. Then literally throw it all in the bag and eat it straight from the bag. Cheese. Now we're gonna mix it all up. There we are. 
So you can see why this would be appealing if you're like on the go and literally need something that you can just grab and eat. This is like your plate, your fork, everything all included, which is so nice. Took me like 10 minutes. That's it. And what's nice is you can keep everything in your fridge, you know, and you can portion it out in single meals, which is also nice as a college student because then you're not having like a ton of leftovers. All right, it is now officially dinner time. And usually by the end of the day, I have a little bit more time to kind of cook and make something a little bit more sophisticated. So I'm gonna be showing you two of my favorite dinner meals. We've got sweet potato quesadillas, which are really good. And I've been kind of in like a salsa kick right now. So that's extra good with salsa. And another dinner that I make quite regularly, which is also nice because you can just grab kind of random ingredients that you should have in your fridge. My family recipe of chicken tenders. These are both very simple. Also, even though they're a little bit more sophisticated. For the chicken tenders, all that you need is some pancake mix. Um, it calls for Bisquick, but I have this one already. Egg. You need butter, some Parmesan cheese, and then some like seasoning. You can kind of do whatever you want. I do a little bit of paprika, things like that, just to make your flavor a little bit more strong. And then you need some chicken. And actually, I found like my local grocery store has pre-sliced chicken already. I didn't get it today, just in case you guys don't have that. Um, but that makes it even faster when it's like pre-sliced, because literally all that you have to do is just like coat it and cook it. <laughs> All right, this next one is kind of a newer one for me, but I really have been liking it, so I thought I would share it with you. Um, and this is the sweet potato quesadilla. A little bit of different ingredients. This one's one that I kind of have to like go and shop for. Not so much stuff that I usually have on hand, but it is very good, so sharing it nonetheless. For this, you will want a sweet potato, um, a red onion, we've got some nutmeg, some flour tortillas, a little bit of oil, you can add pecans. I'm not a big pecan fan, so I don't. And then you'll want some cheese and some salsa for topping. It's my favorite salsa right now. And this pretty much just follows the same recipe as any other regular quesadilla. It's a little bit more fresh ingredients and um, some nutrition in there. All right, so I made the Thai noodles and taco in a bag yesterday for lunch and dinner, and I didn't want to waste any food, so I am now making the second stuff today. So these two recipes are my homemade family recipe of chicken fingers and the quesadilla that I've been that I found online and that I have been loving. So we're gonna make those for my food today. That was looking kind of good. I haven't danced well. Oh, super dizzy. <laughs> You'll want to throw everything into a one gallon Ziploc bag. So this is going to be your pancake mix, Parmesan cheese, uh, salt, and any other seasonings that you're using. Then you go ahead and dip your chicken strips into the egg and put it in the bag and shake it up. Make sure it's all coated. And then you put it on the sheet. Okay, these are nice and battered up, so I'm gonna melt some butter, put it on them, and stick them in the oven. Okay, here we are at our halfway point, and I'm going to flip them now. Just finished the chicken tenders, and they are so good as always. Like, this is seriously my favorite meals, and you can keep everything, which is super nice, just like in your freezer. I'm gonna put the recipe in the description. Don't get mad at me, Mom, for releasing our <laughs> recipe. Got a little bit crispy. This is so hot. Also, this does not look like the usual sweet potatoes that I get. I don't know, I just asked the lady to give me one and we'll see if this works. So I'm about 90% certain that this is not the right potato. It smells like just a regular potato. So I don't know what happened at the grocery store, but this is definitely not a sweet potato. You win some, you lose some though. We're just gonna try regardless and see if it still tastes good. And I will let you know. I'm pretty sure it's not going to taste good, but you know what? Better than wasted food. This is just not the right consistency at all. We'll see. I'm gonna put it on my tortilla, my cheese. I basically am making a baked potato right now. Here's our weird potato mashup that's not sweet potato. I'm gonna grill it. But it is cooking nicely, I will say that. I'm just not sure how good it's gonna taste. Like it's basically just like a baked, baked potato like on a tortilla, which feels weird to me. Okay, here we have our finished quesadilla. I will say this quesadilla cooked nicely. Here we go.
you know, it's not bad, even still with this, the wrong ingredients. <laughs> like it just tastes like, I don't even know, it tastes like some intricate form of a quesadilla. So there you go, not too bad overall. With the salsa on top, I think it'll add more flavor and it'll be better. Well, some of that worked and some of it didn't, but I guess that's kind of the thing with cooking is sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't, and you know what? It's usually at a bowl hole anyway, so it is what it is. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you find some healthy recipes and, and some good recipes that are quick and easy and fast to make. As college students, all the links to the recipes will be in the description box if you want to see the recipes and more detailed instructions of how to make them, but from my perspective, they did not take very long and they were pretty easy and all generally good. <laughs> I wish I'd gotten the right potato, that's for sure. If you want to see more videos like this, then let me know and I'll see you guys later. Bye.